So let's look at an example that's a little bit more complicated. I want you to assign R and S configurations to this molecule. Why is this more complicated? The reason is because this molecule has two stereocenters, one located here and the other located here. In order to assign R and S to this molecule, we have to do so to each of its individual stereocenters. Let's begin by analyzing the stereocenter at left. This carbon is bonded to a bromine, a carbon, a hydrogen, and a carbon. Which of those four things wins? The bromine. Now between the carbon up here and the carbon to the right, they of course tie, so I have to go out until I break the tie. The carbon up here is bonded to a hydrogen, while the carbon down here, going in the direction that gives me the highest atomic number, is bonded to a bromine. Thus, this appendage here to the right has priority group number two, and this methyl up here is three. The hydrogen is, of course, the loser at four. Now, if I were to draw a circle going from one to two to three, it would look counterclockwise. Once again, keeping in mind that this hydrogen, as drawn, is pointing three-dimensionally towards me. I have to imagine what I would be seeing if I were on the opposite side of the molecule with the hydrogen pointing three-dimensionally away from me. Going from one to two to three, you would know that that would be pointing clockwise. And clockwise is indeed R. So we've determined the stereo configuration of the stereo center at the left. Let's now do the same thing for the stereo center at the right. I've got a carbon that's bonded to a carbon, a carbon, a bromine, and a hydrogen. Which of those has the highest priority? the bromine. Now the carbon here and the carbon here, of course, tie. So now I have to go out to break the tie. This carbon up here is bonded to a carbon. And this carbon down here, going in the direction toward the highest priority substituent on it, is bonded to a bromine. Bromine wins, thus the appendage here to the left has priority number two. And this CH2CH3 group, or ethyl group, has priority number three. The hydrogen, once again, is the loser. As I trace my circle going from one to two to three, it looks like it's clockwise. However, my hydrogen is pointing three-dimensionally towards me. If I were on the opposite side of the screen, staring at this molecule with the hydrogen pointing away from me, this would indeed be counterclockwise. Thus, the stereocenter is S. So this brings us to an even more complex subject. Look at each of these pairs. Are they each enantiomers or not? In order to do this, just like we did with our example from the previous slide, we need to determine what the stereo configuration is, either R or S, of every single stereo center in each one of these molecules. Let's begin with the molecule at the upper left. I look at the stereo center on the left here, and you'll note that it's stuck to a bromine, carbon, hydrogen, and carbon. Who wins? Bromine. Now between this carbon stuck to three hydrogens and this carbon stuck to a chlorine and an oxygen, who wins? Obviously the appendage stuck here to the right. Thus, this methyl is going to be priority group number three, and the hydrogen is going to be the loser. What type of shape does this have? Going from one to two to three, you'll notice is clockwise. If I were staring at it from a direction that placed my lowest priority group three-dimensionally away from me, however, it would actually look counterclockwise. Thus, this stereocenter is S. Now I'm going to assign R or S to the stereocenter at the right. It's bonded to a chlorine, oxygen, carbon, and carbon. The chlorine wins followed by the oxygen. This carbon is bonded to a hydrogen. The carbon at left is stuck to a bromine. The carbon at left, of course, wins between those two, and the CH3 is the loser. Going from one to two to three in this molecule looks counterclockwise, and it indeed is because the lowest priority group, the CH3, is pointing three-dimensionally away from us. Thus, the stereocenter located here is S. Let's take a look at this molecule over here. Now, if we go through the same process with the molecule here at the right, which I'll let you attempt on your own, you will see that it indeed gives me an R and R configuration. So the question is, these two molecules that otherwise have the exact same order of bonding differ only in one way, and that is the three-dimensional shapes around each of their stereocenters. The molecule at left is an SS molecule, and the molecule at right is an RR molecule. What are they relative to each other? Well, because they are exact opposites, one of them is SS and the other is RR, they are indeed enantiomers. Let's see if we can do this with the molecules down here at the bottom. Looking at my carbon stereocenter to the left, it's bonded to a bromine, carbon, hydrogen, and carbon. You'll note going through the exact same process that this stereocenter ends up being S. As I go through the same process for the stereocenter at the right, you'll discover that it is also S. And indeed, this molecule that I've drawn here is the exact same molecule that I've drawn up here. How about this molecule shown over here to the right? 
If you go through the same process, you'll discover that the stereo center at left has a configuration of S, and the one at right has a configuration of S. So I have two molecules here, one of which has a carbon bonded to a CH3 hydrogen bromine that is appended to a carbon bonded to a chlorine CH3 and an OH, and another molecule of whom could be said the exact same thing. The molecule at the left has an SS configuration, and the molecule at right also has an SS configuration. So what are these two molecules relative to each other? They are actually the exact same molecule in which one or more of the bonds has just been rotated in some fashion. Let's look at these molecules at the upper right now. If you go through the exact same process, you'll discover that the stereocenter at left over here is S, and the stereocenter at right here is S. Indeed, this molecule right here is the exact same molecule as this one over here, for whom we also determine an SS configuration. Now, if you go through the same process again, you'll discover that the stereocenter over here is R, and the stereocenter here is S. So the question is, what in the world are these two molecules to each other? As I've stated earlier, if I have two molecules that are otherwise the same, but have the exact opposite configurations, this one here is SS, and this one here is RR, then they are enantiomers of each other. But what do I say of these two molecules? This one is SS and this one's RS. Are they exact opposites of each other? Well, they aren't. They're kind of like half opposite and half the same. So are they enantiomers? Well, no, they aren't. So what in the world do we call them? Well, as it turns out, we call these guys diastereomers. So here's the take home. If you have two otherwise identical molecules that have more than one stereocenter in them, then one of three scenarios will occur. One, if they have the same RS configuration at every single stereocenter, then they're the same molecule. In other words, if they're exactly the same, R for R and S for S, then they're the exact same molecule, even though they might be drawn in slightly different rotations. Two. If they have the opposite RS configuration at every single stereocenter, then they're enantiomers. In other words, if every single stereocenter is exactly opposite R for S, then those two molecules are enantiomers. And three, if they're anywhere in between, then we call them diastereomers. Which brings us to this question. Which of the following terms best describes the pair of compounds shown here? Are they enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same compound. You'll note that each of these molecules has two stereocenters. So in order to answer this, I have to assign R or S to each one of the stereocenters. Let's start with this one located right here. You'll notice that this carbon is bonded to a carbon up top, a carbon to the left, and a carbon to the right. Now all of those obviously tie. So how do I determine who gets the highest priority? I have to break the tie. The carbon here to the right is stuck to an oxygen, the carbon here up top is stuck to hydrogen, and the carbon to the left is stuck to another carbon. Tie is broken. This carbon located to the right, being stuck to an oxygen, has highest priority, followed by the carbon here to the left that's stuck to another carbon, and then followed by the carbon that's stuck to three hydrogens. Now you might wonder, where in the world is priority group number four? You have to understand that there's a hydrogen here. It's just not shown, and we assume that it is pointing in the opposite direction of this CH3 group here. Thus, we have a dashed hydrogen pointing away from us. And it, of course, has the lowest priority. As I trace a circle going from 1 to 2 to 3, you'll note that it goes clockwise. Thus, it is R. Let's see if we can assign R or S to this stereocenter. It is stuck to an oxygen, a carbon, and a carbon. The oxygen wins. Now between this carbon here to the left and this carbon here to the right, you'll note the carbon to the left is stuck to two carbons, while the carbon to the right is just stuck to one. Carbon to the left gets higher priority, so it is number two, while carbon to the right is number three. There is, of course, a hydrogen that is not drawn, but has a wedged bond here and gets the lowest priority. As I trace a circle going from one to two to three, it looks like it's counterclockwise, but it would look clockwise if I were staring at it from a perspective at which this lowest priority hydrogen was pointing three-dimensionally away from me. Thus, this is also an R configuration. Let's go through the same process over here. Analyzing this stereocenter indicated here, it's stuck to a carbon, a carbon, a carbon. This carbon down at the bottom is stuck to an oxygen. The carbon over here is stuck to another carbon. Carbon up here is stuck to hydrogens. 
The one pointing down here has the highest priority, followed by the one pointing up here, followed by the carbon stuck to hydrogens. There is, of course, an additional hydrogen that I haven't drawn that I'll let you imagine if you want to. As I trace a circle going from 1 to 2 to 3, this is counterclockwise, thus it is S. Now let's look at this stereocenter down here. It's bonded to an oxygen, a carbon, and a carbon. Oxygen gets highest priority. The carbon up top is stuck to two carbons, while the carbon over here is stuck to one. Thus, the carbon up top gets higher priority than this one over here. Going from one to two to three, it looks like it's going clockwise. However, the lowest priority group, the hydrogen, that isn't drawn is pointing three-dimensionally towards us. Thus, if I were staring at this molecule from the back side of the screen and tracing this circle, it would indeed look counterclockwise. Thus, it is S. So the molecule at left and the molecule at right have the exact same bonding pattern and look otherwise identical, except the molecule at left has an RR configuration and the molecule at right has an SS configuration. Thus, they are exact opposites R to S. So what are they in relation to each other? They are enantiomers. Now, what would they be if they had the exact same configurations? Well, they'd be the same molecule, just drawn with one of them kind of three-dimensionally rotated in some way, potentially. And what if they were half opposites? What would they be then? Well, of course, they would be diastereomers. We now end this presentation by giving you a problem to do on your own. Which of the following terms best describes the pair of compounds shown here? Are they enantiomers, diastereomers, or the same compound? I'll let you attempt to do that on your own. Until next time, have an enjoyable rest of your day.